Today we're going to review properties of exponents and we're going to use those properties to help us simplify expressions involving exponents. So your essential question, how to use properties of exponents to simplify expressions. And I encourage you to take more notes than maybe what I'm writing down. I started off with a table um, of the different properties of exponents and you've seen these before. Um, one column is the name, next column is the property, and then we'll do some examples together. So our first property of exponents is the product of powers. Basically, this tells you that if you have um, two exponential expressions being multiplied together and they have the exact same base, then what you're going to do is you're going to just add those exponents together. So as an example, oh, let's say I had x to the fifth times x to the third. Notice that my bases are exactly the same. So if I'm multiplying like bases, I just add those exponents together and this will give me x to the eighth power. Okay, quotient of powers. Now you're dividing. So you've got the exact same base that you're dividing and what you're going to end up doing is subtracting the powers. So if I, for example, did x to the fifth divided by x to the third, then I would end up with x to the second because five minus three is two. Moving down to power of a power, this is when you have some exponential expression raised to another power. And what you're gonna do there is you're gonna multiply the powers. So M gets multiplied to N. So for example here, if I gave you, how about X to the fifth raised to the third power? Well, I have X to the fifth as my um, exponential expression, and now I'm going to raise that to the third power. So all I'm doing here is multiplying powers. So it's x to the 15th. Moving down to power of a product. Every factor that is in the product within the parentheses gets raised to the exponent. So for example, you have one factor a and that gets raised to the m power. And then you have your other factor, b, that gets raised to the m power. And you could have however many factors there are. So for example, if I gave you, uh, let's say three x squared raised to the second power. Well, let's see, we've got a product in our parentheses. Three is being multiplied to x squared. So not only are we going to raise 3 to the second power, we're also going to raise the other factor, which is x squared to the second power. Well, 3 to the second power is 9. Now we're going to have to go back and use this power of a power property because I have x squared raised to the second power. So that's x to the fourth power because I've multiplied the powers together. So we end up with 9 x fourth. So power of a quotient, now you have a quotient being raised to a power. And that power will be given, or that exponent will be given, to both numerator and denominator of the quotient. So here we would have a is our numerator, so it gets raised to the mth power. And then b is our denominator, so it also gets raised to the mth power. So a good example here might be, let's say I have 2 fifths raised to the second power. All right, well, both numerator and denominator get squared. So I'm going to have 2 to the second power over 5 to the second power, or 4 over 25. A negative power, or a negative exponent, is also known as the inverse exponent because you're going to have to do the multiplicative inverse of the base. In other words, you're gonna to have to take the reciprocal of the base in order to make the exponent positive. 
So that's going to be your first step every single time. You do the reciprocal of the base, and that makes the exponent a positive exponent. We'll do a couple examples here. So first example, why don't we start with 1 over 4 raised to the negative 2 power. So in order to make that exponent positive, we need to do the reciprocal of the base. So the reciprocal of 1 fourth is just 4, and you can now square that. It becomes a positive exponent because I did the reciprocal of the base equals 16. All right, let's try another example. What if I gave you 7a to the negative third? Well, the first thing you would do is you would do the reciprocal of the base in order to get a positive exponent. So we'll go 1 over 7a. Now that whole base that I just did the reciprocal of gets raised to a positive 3 power. By doing the reciprocal of the base, you get rid of the negative power. All right, so now I need to go back to a power of a quotient property where I'm going to give that third power or that exponent of 3 to both numerator and denominator. So this would really be 1 to the third power over 7a to the third power. All right, so the top's going to be pretty easy. One to the third power is just one. However, the denominator, we need to deal with that. So 7a to the third power, now we're going to go back to a power of a product property, where I'm going to give every factor in the base that exponent. All right, so both 7 gets raised to the third power, and so does a. So I end up with 1 over, now 7 cubed is 343, a to the third power. All right, so once again, in order to deal with the negative power, you're going to do the reciprocal of the base, and then you're going to have a positive power by doing the reciprocal of that base. Moving on to the zero power. So what if something is raised to the zero power? Anything raised to the zero power is going to be one. Okay, and it's going to just be easier for you to remember that, but I will prove that to you. So let's say I use, as an example, a to the seventh divided by a to the seventh. Well, a to the seventh divided by a to the seventh, numerator and denominator is exactly the same. So obviously that's going to equal one. It's going to simplify to one. But if we go back and we look at quotient of powers, what you can see is anytime you have like bases being divided, you subtract the exponents. So let's go ahead and apply that power down here. Well, the power of seven minus seven, that's just going to be a to the zero power, right? Seven minus seven is zero, and that's the same as one, right? So I proved it to you. Now I noticed we did not highlight power of a quotient. Hopefully you did that. Power of a quotient property 